Good morning, Rainbow, and thank you for joining us for our online worship service today. Whether you are one of our regular members or you just happen to find us online today, we are glad that you've made the decision to worship the Lord. Today is Mother's Day, and we want to wish all of the mothers of our congregation and whoever else might be watching, Happy Mother's Day. There is no better way to celebrate this holiday than to be worshiping alongside your family. Today is such a great day to worship our God and to celebrate our Savior's resurrection. Thank you for being here. Let's all worship together. Guide me, O Thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but Thou art mighty. Hold me with Thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Bread Be my 
Gracious and merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that you blessed us with. We thank you for blessing us with another day here on this earth that you've created for us. We thank you for the technology you've given us, Father, to be able to do these things and to be able to still worship together. Even though we may not be together <clears throat> physically in person, we're still together in spirit, Father. And we thank you for blessing us with the intelligence to be able to do these things. We thank you, Father, for your son, for the death that he suffered for us, and for living his life and an example for us to live by. We thank you, Father, for your word, for blessing us with it and allowing us to learn about you and to learn how your son came to this earth and died for us. We pray, Father, that you would help us to study it every day, that we would never neglect it, that you would help us to learn it and help us to spread it to others. We thank you for allowing us to be able to talk to you and pray to you, to be able to throw our worries and cares upon you because, Father, we know that there's nobody else that can take care of our problems like you do. We ask, Father, that you forgive us of our wrongdoings, forgive us of our sins. We ask, Father, that you will correct us when we do wrong and be patient with us. We thank you for your patience, Father, and for your long suffering with us. Father, as we worship today, we ask that you would help us to do everything pleasing to you in accordance to your will. Help us to worship in spirit and truth. And it's in Christ's most holy name we pray. Amen.
this time, this morning, we come together to remember Jesus Christ, to remember Him as He has asked us to remember Him, to remember in Genesis, the first chapter, verse 26, it says, then God said, let us make man in our own image. We are made in God's image. In the us, I understand to be God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus was there when Moses parted the Red Sea. He was there when Abraham was promised by God to that the cranes of the seashore, as many as there are, would be like his grandchildren, his great grandchildren, and so forth. He was there when Isaac, Jacob, Jacob and his twelve sons, the twelve sons became the twelve tribes of Israel. Remembering Jesus, the prophets, the kings that came. And then the appointed time. The appointed time that He came to this earth. That He left the spiritual world. He left the heavens. Came down His Spirit in a womb. You know, Mary's womb. Was born as any man was born. Lived out His life as a 12-year-old. He astounded the... Jewish leaders, the teachers with his knowledge and his wisdom. At 30, he began his ministry, being an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that he said was from God for us to know what God wants us to do, how to act, how to be. And knowing all of this, he knew how it was going to end. And in Matthew chapter 26, Verse 26, he establishes a supper. During the meal, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it 
to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and passed it to them, saying, All of you drink of it, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the sins, for forgiveness of our sins. His body. Let us remember His body as we bow our heads and pray. Father God, we come before You acknowledging Jesus as our Savior, the One who died for us, the One who came to this earth and lived and all the things that He did while He was here. The body that He gave willingly, which is represented in the bread, as He established. And these things we pray in His name. Amen. As we continue, the Apostle Paul comes and says to the church of Corinth, he says, I received from the Lord what I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night which He was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in memory of me. Likewise, he said, take the cup after eating. He took the cup after eating and said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Wherever, whenever you drink, do this in memory of me. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until He comes. His blood washes our sins away. His was the only perfect blood that could do this. Will you bow your heads with me? Father God, we thank You so much for the blood that Jesus shed on the cross, the blood that came from the crown on His head, from the beating of His back, for the stakes that were driven in His hands and feet and every pound that it hurt. We know, Father God, He did this because He loved us. And this blood is represented by the fruit of the vine which we're about to partake of now. Help us to do so in Jesus' name. Amen. We finished the Lord's Supper, and our elders have established this time to do our contribution. The blessings we have each day from God. Will you bow your heads? Father God, we thank you so much for all the things that we have, all the physical things, Lord, but most of all our spiritual things. The peace, the happiness, the love, the forgiveness, all these things that come from you, Father, we know come from you. And help us, Father, to have the right attitude and the right heart to give unto you what is yours. And these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sweet is the song, Sweet is the song. I'm singing today. I'm singing today. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Trouble and sorrow. Trouble and sorrow. Have vanished away. Have vanished away. I have been.
Good morning, and let me be one of the first to say Happy Mother's Day. To all of the wonderful godly mothers that are out there, we want you to know how much that we love and appreciate you. And we are so glad that all of you have made the wonderful decision to be a part of our worship service here today. Now, it could be that you're wondering, where is Blake at today? Even though I'm sure that there are many of you who recognize exactly where I'm at. I'm in our church's nursery, our TikTok room as we call it. You know, I got to thinking and I thought I've, I've probably preached or taught Bible class lessons all around this wonderful facility of ours here at Rainbow, but I have never had the honor of sitting and, and sharing a Bible lesson here. And so why, why would that be such a, an important thing? Why is that such a a thing of honor. Listen, in these precious little yellow seats, countless children have begun their, well, their relationship with God. The, the, the very foundation of their knowledge of God was laid right here around this, this table. And so many wonderful, godly women have, have sat right where I'm sitting and they have shared their love for the Lord and their love for these children week after week, year after year. It's humbling. It's truly an honor to be able to take a few moments here on this, this Lord's Day, but also this Mother's Day, to share a little bit with you from, from God's Word. Now, before we do dive into our, our lesson this morning, we have a surprise for you. You see, if it were a normal Mother's Day here at Rainbow, our annual tradition, and I think it's an absolutely wonderful one, is we always make sure to give flowers to all the moms. It's just a small way for us to say how much we love and appreciate you and to recognize you for all that you do. But since we're not together, we still want to give you some flowers. But we want to take just a moment and share with you a video. A video presentation that has been made possible from, well, a lot of wonderful kids here at Rainbow. Many who have sat in these seats in recent years who just want to take a moment to say Happy Mother's Day. Now, I haven't seen the finished product, and I'm going to watch it just as you do, but 
I think it'd be a good idea to have the, the Kleenex handy. We love you, Mom. We hope you have a happy Mother's Day. Enjoy the video and I'll see you in a moment. Hey mom, just making this appreciation video for you to tell you how much you mean to me and our family. You are truly a blessing to us and we can't repay you for anything you have done. Um, I know it's going to be a rough couple months here very soon as me, I'm leaving for college soon and uh, we'll make it work. Everything will be okay. Um, you taught me right and I'll keep you in my heart always and I love you so much. Thank you, Misty, for being such a good wife and now a good teacher. We love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. To the best mom ever, my mom, Leslie Keener. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mommy. My favorite reason I love you is because you are sweet kind and loving. Happy Mother's Day! We love you. Um, you just taught me a lot in life and you taught me not to just let anybody bring you down. If you have something you want to do, go after it no matter what anybody else says. And you taught me to be the person I am today. And I love you so much. Thank you for everything you've done and taking care of me. And Thank you for keeping me safe whenever I need it, and you will be there anytime you, I need you, and I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Day, Mom. We love you. You're the best mom. You're ever. the best mom ever, and you're so beautiful, and we, I don't know what we could do without you. Yes. We love you. We couldn't yeah. do anything without you. Say bye, Dashie. Bye. Happy Mother's Day, we love you. I appreciate Mom because she's always there for us. I appreciate Mom because she's a hardworking person. I appreciate Mom because she takes care of us. We love, we love you. you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Avery Daniels. I love you very much. Thank you for the sweet notes you always give me. Mother's Day. What about your mother so much? She always takes care of us. Right. What makes mommy so awesome, Bruce? And she takes care of us and she cooks breakfast for us and she cooks. She cooks um, dinner for us. That's right. And keep and keep us and keep and keep us home. That's right. Keep us safe. Well, we love her, mommy very much, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, say one more time. Happy Mother's Day. Okay. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you for all the sacrifices you make for me and our family. I love you so very much. Happy Mother's Day. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. You're so awesome because you're kind and sweet and we love you. Happy Mother's Day. Mommy. Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. You're the best. Happy Mom, Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. You're a great mother, wife, and friend. We love you with all our hearts. Happy Mother's Day, baby. Hey, Sawyer, can you say Happy Mother's Day? Say we love you and thank you so much for always loving, supporting, and taking care of us. Can you blow kisses? Mm -hmm. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. It's the greatest mom in the world. Love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. You're the best mom ever because you take care of me and love me. 
Hey mom, I wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day and know that I love you and everybody in our family loves you and you do the best for us and we can't repay you with that love that you give to us and you try to get the best for everybody around you and we just love you so much and I wanted to say thank you and nobody could ask for a better mother than you are. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. I love you. I love when you do talk with me and play with me and paint with me. Happy Mother's Day, Laura. One thing about you that makes you so special is your ability to help others in any way that you can. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. You're awesome. You're the best. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. You're the best, Mom. I wish you happy a Mother's Day. And I wish I never had another one because you're the sweetest mom I ever had. Happy Mother's Day. I love you and I thank you for being with me and raising me and encouraging me and guiding me and cooking. That's some good cooking. Thanks for just encouraging me and being so thoughtful about other people. You are one of the most amazing people I've ever known and I thank God that he put me with such an amazing mom. Man, wasn't that an awesome video? It really got you in the feels, didn't it? I'll give you a minute to kind of maybe regain your composure. I'm sure that that's a video you'll want to watch over and over again, as we all will. But again, Mom, we just want to say Happy Mother's Day. And we want you to know how much we love and appreciate you for all you do. And, and while our sermon today does center around a godly woman, a, a very godly mother, the, the lessons that learn, we can learn in it are, are applicable to all of us, whether we're a mom or not. So I want to encourage you to take your Bibles and turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 1. And we're going to be spending the majority of our time in that one chapter this morning, 1 Samuel chapter 1. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 1. There was a certain man from Ramathame, a Zophite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah, and the other Peninnah. Peninnah had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to his wife Peninnah and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. And because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. And whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? The first thing that I want us to see from our text this morning, the, the first reality that I want us to remember is that even godly moms are going to face problems. You know, in the text, we saw that there was a man named Elkanah, and Elkanah has two wives, Hannah and Peninnah. Hannah has no children, but Peninnah does. And if that weren't bad enough, Peninnah would actually ridicule, she would make fun of Hannah for not having any children. 
I can only imagine how insecure Hannah must have felt. I can only imagine how heartbroken she must have been for this to, to drive her to the point of, of tears, to, to drive her to the point of not eating. Maybe, maybe those feelings of inadequacy are something that you can relate to. Maybe you've never been able to have children, or maybe you've lost a child. Or maybe you're just struggling right now to make ends meet, to help support or maybe provide for your family the way that you feel you need to. I want you to know today that being a godly mom does not mean that you are not going to face problems in this life. For all of us, all of us face uncertainty. All of us face tribulation and trials. But being a godly mom does mean that you don't have to face those problems alone. Let's see what Hannah did. Picking up now in verse 9. Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I'll give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or strong drink. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. A godly mom, a godly mom prays. You see, Hannah is pouring out her heart to the Lord here. She has some very real problems, anguish and grief that she's going through. But instead of giving up, she looks up. You know, oftentimes it's, it's not until we face great problems in this life that we go to God in prayer the way that we should. And in facing adversity and hardship, it does help us learn to, to rely on God and to persevere and to endure. You know, what we do not see is we don't see Hannah running away from God because of her problems. What we do see is Hannah going to God with her problems. And what a wonderful lesson that is for us to learn. The need to rely upon this wonderful avenue of prayer that God has given us. Let's pick up now in verse 17. Eli answered, Go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant you what you've asked of him. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. A godly mom is going to trust in the provision of God. Yes, God blessed Hannah with a son, and what a wonderful blessing that he was. What a wonderful blessing children always are. But if you will notice in our text, even before God blessed her with a child, God blessed her with an amazing spiritual blessing. He gave her the blessing of peace, even in the midst of the problem. And so it is with us oftentimes as we go to God in prayer and we pour out our heart for whatever it is that may be troubling us. But what a tremendous blessing it is when God grants us peace, even in the midst of the storm, a peace that only He can provide, a peace that truly does pass all understanding, as one could read about in Philippians chapter 4. You know, God is so good, and He is good to us all the time. So may we be a people that trust in God to provide for us all that we need. Now we pick up in verse 21. When the man Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I'll take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, Elkanah, her husband told her. Stay here until you've weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. 
So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with, with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. A godly mom, a godly mom keeps her promises. If you go back to verse 11, you remember how she made a promise. Hannah made a, a vow to God. She said that if God would give her a son, then she would give this son back to God to, to serve him all the days of his life. Now, can you imagine being Hannah for just a moment? Here she was without child for all those years. She had cried out to God, prayed that he would bless her with a child, made this, this vow, this promise. God, if you'll just answer my prayer, if you'll give me this child, I'll give him back to you. And God heard her cries and God answered her prayers. And now Hannah, Hannah in return does what she promised to God. She kept her word. She kept her vow. I can only imagine how challenging it must have been for her to do, but she knew that it was the right thing to do, that it was the only thing to do. So Hannah kept her word. Now let's go to verse 1 of chapter 2. Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. A godly mom is going to praise the Lord. Here we see Hannah. She's praising God. She's praising God because she knew that God had blessed her. She knew that as she was leaving Samuel in his hands, that his hands were the only hands whom she could truly trust to leave her son in. Man, and what a wonderful thing it is to know that, that we too, we have a God that we can and that we should praise because He continues to, to bless us in so many different ways. He is a God, a God who wants to be close to you, a God who wants you to draw near to Him, a God who wants to hear you. He wants to listen to you. He wants to provide you with, with peace even in the midst of the most troublesome times. Oh, what a blessing it is to serve a God like that. Again, I want to say Happy Mother's Day. We love you, Mama. We are so thankful for everything that you have done, everything that you're doing, and everything that you continue to do. We are so thankful that you are a part of our life. We are so thankful for all of the, the godly moms and the impact that you have made and that you will continue to make if the Lord tarries for generations to come. We love you and we appreciate you. And we hope that this day, well, we hope that this day is even just half as special as you are. Happy Mother's Day. Would you go with me to God in prayer? Our Father God, we humbly bow before you and we thank you so much for this day, a day which is yours, a day for us to worship you, to praise you. Truly, God, you have opened up your heavens and you've blessed us in so many ways. Not the least of which, Father, is that you have blessed so many of us with, with godly women in our life, whether it be grandmothers or mothers or aunts or Bible class teachers, so many women, Father, who have loved us and who have nurtured us and who have taken care of us and we are so thankful for them today father and we just pray lord that you would bless them father we pray that as we have worshiped you today that all that we've done together as we have assembled virtually has been pleasing in your sight and father as our time of worship with one another is about to conclude we pray father that you would be with us that you would continue to bless us, that you would give us peace even in the midst of the storms of this life, that you would hear our prayers and that you would answer our cries. All this we ask in Jesus' most precious and holy name. 
Amen. Thank you for joining us for our online worship service today. If you would like to learn more about our church, you can visit us online at rainbowchurchofchrist.org or on our Facebook page. We hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day.